Well, we're here to discuss a studio elective that we ran in 2017 with our third year and second year architecture students within the University of Johannesburg. The studio was entitled Protest City. What was happening prior to that, 2016 and 2015, with um, the student-led protest actions around fees must fall, decolonization of education, roads must fall, um, and we really were interested in how this relates to our architectural discipline. And so for us, breaking it to the students um, was not that much of a challenge. What was a challenge, I think, was what were the outcomes that would expect from such a radical approach, discussing something that is not necessarily related to uh, architecture or space, is then how do we bring it back to our discipline? And, um, and that was an interesting um, uh, sort of approach. And then to follow on from that, is why, why, is pro, why is a protest studio necessary in that context? Right. Little blurb that comes out. So what, what has this got to do with your, your project, with your studio? Well, what we inherited post-1994 was a society that had amnesia. Um, for some moments, the idea of forgetting about what has just happened, the very traumatic history that uh, South Africa comes from. Um, we're in a, a, a moment of trying to redefine ourselves post independent post-colonialism, post-apartheid, this image of a united nation and system and everything working. But what we saw with the 2015 and 16 protests was that that was not the case, that there were still rooted issues. Um, that were not dealt with. And so those protests, when they broke out in universities, in um, townships, and all over the country, um, were as a symbol that shows that very much on the, basis, uh, on the base of this were issues that were not really dealt with, that needed to be addressed. And so how do we not be part of it as an architectural industry or studio? Um, when we are so heavily affected by society in our practice and in our discourse. Um, and so I think a studio like that was inevitable with that context in mind. So what the Mandela years allowed for in South Africa was the, um, the manufacturing of very contrived discourses that were very successful in avoiding uncomfortable topics. Um, and there's also a great distance between the knowledge we produce and the society out there. Um, and what we wanted to do in our project was to try to have architecture that's really uh, beating with the pulse of its society rather than uh, architecture studying an object which is a society which it is, a, is, it is at um, uh, a distance from. Another question mm -hmm. is uh, something about the global, right? So mm -hmm. we're talking a lot about South Africa. Mm -hmm. So for, for, uh, for, for long, the, the knowledge of the West has been taken as universal knowledge. Um, and, and this remains the, the, the status quo. Um, and so there, there is the desperate need, and in, in fact, in this condition of um, epistemic crisis, uh, there is a desperate need for other kinds of knowledges, new kinds of knowledges that are able to respond to the, the multiple social, economic, political, epistemic challenges that we have within education institutions and in society at large. Um, so it, it is certainly the case that, uh, that the global south and the, the questions and challenges that come from the, these parts of the world uh, really have um, uh, immense um, contributions to make to the project of knowledge and architecture. And there are many examples of this already. The, the student and worker protests that broke out in South Africa in 2015 and 2016 uh, echoed and resonated uh, at uh, universities and colleges, campuses around the world, such as uh, Oxford in the UK. Uh, they, they ran concurrently with protests in India, student protests there. And uh, um, even before that, in the year prior to that, in 2014, um, there, were, there were protests that broke out at campuses um, uh, in the U.S. that were related to uh, racialized violence, the, 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 um, the 
issue at Ferguson in the US was iconic and, and was really, really resonated around the world, including in South Africa. And this had something to do with mobilizing um, a particular kind of energy and particular kinds of questions and, and bringing certain kinds of issues to the fore. So the, the, the uh, questions of the, and issues of the global south really are global issues. And uh, the, the, the West certainly is not, um, uh, as we have long known now already, uh, it's, uh, uh, Western knowledge is not necessarily global knowledge, but in many, in many ways it's quite provincial. Uh, and uh, there's m m uh, lots of answers and lots of questions and lots of opportunities that um, uh, can come from the Global South. Uh, the Arab Spring is another one of these, um, uh, that part of the Global South, but really global implications. So my group and I decided to look at uh, xenophobia as a protest and we wanted to basically combat xenophobia and what's interesting we're in 2019 now but we're looking at the xenophobic attacks in uh, 2008 so it was interesting to actually find out how these xenophobic attacks took place the places in where they took place and how it affected everyone around them where they took place what we focused on was the Alex um, Township Alexandra Township and basically we looked at how the foreign nationals behaved in a space and also the local residents, how they behaved in a space and how their space affected all those xenophobic attacks, their businesses, their social standings and all the things that uh, were involved in that process.